Welcome, 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 boys and girls, geeks and nerds, to another exciting edition of geek to me Radio. Today we are talking with voiceover actress extraordinaire Susan Eisenberg, talking about her work as Wonder Woman as well as her work in many video games. We'll have all that and more, so stand by. Thank you for tuning in. If you're listening in the St. Louis area on the radio, welcome. If you are in points online using the TuneIn Radio app or streaming us live on our website, thank you. And if you are listening to this after the fact in the podcast version, we greatly appreciate all of our listeners in all their forms all over. Today, I, I, Joey, I've just got the best job in the world. Last week at this time, we were chatting with Robin played by, uh, obviously, Burt Ward from the 66 Batman animated uh, series, the movie that just came out in the animated form, Return of the Cape Crusaders. Today, I'm talking with Wonder Woman. On the line, we have the phenomenally talented Susan Eisenberg. Susan, thank you so much for taking time out of your Saturday to be on air with us. You're so welcome. That was such a great introduction. <laughs> thank you so You're much. You're very, very welcome. Thank you. Now, um, we, I put this out on Twitter and on Facebook and on my Instagram page, and if you're not following me, you should be, at geektomeradio.com. Susan is the voice of Wonder Woman yet again in the upcoming Injustice 2 video game. Injustice, the original one, which you also did the voice, was probably my favorite video game of 2013, and you've got a sequel coming out. I know you said you cannot talk about it, so callers, if you are going to call in to ask Susan a question, please do not ask her anything regarding that. It's a contractual thing, and we get that. But uh, I am going to give away a copy of it to one of our listeners. All you have to do is call in, say hello to Susan. We'll put your name in a drawing. Joey V, my producer, will pull your name at the end of the show, and we will contact you back. It's not due to release until March, but when it does come out, I will see to it personally that you get a copy so that you don't have to buy it. Uh, Being the voice of Wonder Woman across so many platforms, uh, Susan, it must be... Uh, a very unique experience to have, to, in my opinion, anyway, you are the definitive voice of Wonder Woman. Uh, that's, you know, I, that's great to hear. I love hearing that. It's, um, you know, it just never gets old voicing her, whether it's in a video game or a movie or um, an animated series. I mean, it was just beyond um, incredible to get the job when I did in 2000 and that we're talking about it now in 2016 um, still pinching myself, truly. I can imagine. And it's one of those things, you know, you said you got the job in 2000. Wonder Woman, we are celebrating her 75th anniversary this year, <laughs> the creation of the character. And what a year it's been. We've got a feature film coming up from DC mm-hmm. Comics in 2017. The previews look fantastic. Um, as, fantastic. as an insider, have you gotten to see anything that uh, the general public has not as far as the movie goes? Wait, <laughs> I love that you consider me an insider. That's so great. I mean, um, the the truth is, and since I voice Wonder Woman, I can speak to the truth, wink, wink. Um, (laughs) You know, the movie version and all of that, the the movie universe is very, very different than the universe I'm in. So as much as I'm connected to her, um, the, the, the voice, I mean, the, the voiceover community and the film community, very, very different. So it's it's not like, you know, I'm invited to private screenings of the Wonder Woman movie. I mean, hopefully, um, you know, I'll be I'll be there to watch it when it comes out. And hopefully there'll be a screening beforehand where I get to see it. 
but I'm not privy to any inside intel. I wish I were, because then I could share stuff with the listeners. Well, you should be privy. That's just that's just ridiculous. I'm going to call uh, Patty Jenks, and I'll call Warner Brothers and get that fixed for you. Okay. Well, <laughs> <laughs> so it, it, when you do these different versions of Diana and of Wonder Woman across uh, the video game version for the uh, DC Universe Online, as well as the Injustice, and then you go into the Justice League animated series, and then there's been the two... Uh, animated films, Justice League Doom and Superman Batman Apocalypse, are you given any specific directions? Do they want you to do her voice differently at all? Or is it just like, no, no, this is Susan. She's got it. No, it's definitely, um, depending on the project, there there are differences for sure. Because um, Diana from Justice League is different than she is. It was in Injustice and certainly different in Apocalypse. Um, different stories and, give, and, you know, ultimately the same character, but a different story and a different telling of that story. Mm-hmm. So depending on who the writer is, depending on who the director is, the voice director, I get told different things for different projects. Obviously, if you hear my voice, it's similar. It's not like, you know, who's right. that? I can't imagine that season. <laughs> you know, like, I mean, it's, it's familiar to people. It's not like people don't recognize my voice. But there are definitely, definitely slight variations, whether it's just deeper in my register, whether it's a more mature sounding voice, um, or whether it's um, slightly more innocent or more worn, more um, more battle hungry mm-hmm. voice. So it, it just depends on the project and what the director and the writer want me to do. Sure, that makes sense. We actually have our first caller. We have Donna on line one. Donna, say hello to Susan Eisenberg. Hi, how are you? I'm well, how are you? I'm great. Super nervous, but great. Don't be nervous. Don't be nervous. Don't be nervous. nervous? <laughs> <laughs> don't be nervous. Did, you have a, did you have a question for her? Do you just want to say hello? I really want to say hello. I'm not sure of how, what question I could choose to actually ask. No, that's fine. Just saying hello is fine. Uh, I take it, uh, where do you know Susan from? Is it from the animated series? Is it from the one of the video games? All of them. All of them. Everything. Fantastic. Big fan. <laughs> <laughs> Huge fan. Huge fan. Well, fantastic. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you for calling. Yeah. And just to say hello, that's perfect. Thank you. Yeah, we don't require anything. If you don't no want to ask problem. a question, yeah. So are you less nervous now that, now that you've got the hello out of the way, Donna? Yes. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Good, I'm glad. And uh, Donna, if you would stay on hold, Joey V is going to take your name and telephone number. Uh, listen for the whole hour. We're going to draw a name. So you might be the winner of that Injustice 2 Gods Among Us game. You pick whatever platform. If, it, if you have a PC, Xbox, or PlayStation, we'll make sure you get the proper game. And thank you so much for listening, okay. and thanks for calling in today. Thank you. Thank you, guys. You, you have a great one. one. Thank you. you. Have a good day, too. All right. We're going to put her back on hold. And so... Uh, talking about Wonder Woman's 75th anniversary, she was recently named as a U.N. ambassador. Um, that's that's amazing in and of itself uh, that she embodies these qualities of hope and peace and love so much that she's been named as a uh, U.N. ambassador. That's that's pretty amazing. It's extraordinary. And, you know, um, I love that this year is is such a profound year for her because she's really getting her due. Like you said earlier in the introduction, she has her movies. She has all these projects. She's, the stamps are out. The celebration is ongoing. The UN ambassadorship. I mean, it's, it's so long overdue. And I say that not just for the character, but for the fans, because the fans have waited so patiently and tirelessly for her to have her recognition. They've been waiting so long for a film and when you think about how many Superman movies and how many Batman movies we've had, which is wonderful, um, it just seems unfair, though, that there hasn't been, um, that she hasn't been represented as well in, in features and other projects. So I, I just think that this year, and I hope it continues after this year, and I have a feeling it will, um, especially with the franchise that Gaul is being a part of. So I just think that it's like the best is yet to come regarding the character. I, I completely agree. It's uh, we, we obviously we had her in 76 when Linda Carter played her on TV. Right. But up until right. Justice League, I guess, really, uh, there, we, she wasn't really seen in another medium. And since then, so it's fantastic that all this is coming out. And I know friends of mine are still 
still binge watching Justice League on Netflix. And uh, and I will tell you honestly, there's always those actors or actresses when you for someone like me who buys and reads the comic books, the certain voice you hear in your head when I read a Wonder Woman comic. I'm, I'm not even kidding. Susan, yours is the voice I hear in my head. You know what? I know you're not kidding because I hear that a lot. And I have to say there are very few compliments that affect me as deeply as that does, because to know that you made an impression on people who love the character and who read the books and who have watched the series. I mean, there's just for a performer, there's really no greater compliment that you can receive. And I hear that a lot when I go to the Comic Cons or even on Twitter. I'll hear it a lot that when they read that, you know, they they hear me or they hear Phil or Kevin, um, you know, Carl Lumley or Jean. I mean, it's it's such a it's such a tremendous compliment to get from the fans. I can imagine. And it's well deserved, too. We are going to take a really quick break. We're going to play uh, some of your favorite commercials. I know Michelle and Chesterfield, you wanted to hear that garden commercial. We've got that coming up and more with Susan Eisenberg. Stand by. Won't harm me. Then I'll rely on brute strength. Did I mention I'm an Amazon? <laughs> Submit to me. The voice you're hearing, of course, is that of Susan Eisenberg as Wonder Woman in the upcoming Injustice 2. I just posted the link if you want to watch the video. On my Facebook page, facebook.com slash geek to me radio. You can check out that video. And if you're interested in pre ordering the game, you can go to injustice.com. You can pre order it through Amazon, Best Buy, GameStop, and the PlayStation Store itself. Or give us a call, 855 770 1260. Say hello to Susan Eisenberg, and you can win a copy of Injustice 2 for the gaming platform of your choice. We had Kyle from St. Anne. He didn't want to go on the air. I guess he was nervous too, Susan. But he he gave you his regards. (laughs) Hi, Kyle. Thank you. And Kyle's name is in the drawing as well. So uh, if you want to call in, say hello. If you're a little nervous. Donna was nervous. Donna got through it. Susan didn't bite. So uh, give us a call. It's so funny because when I do the Comic-Cons, you know, there are people who who just want to stop by and say hello and they'll, they'll come up and they'll say, you know, I don't, I just want to say hi. And I'm like, of course, that's why I'm here. Like, <laughs> please come say hello. Please come talk to me about the justice league. I love talking about the show and, and wonder woman and all of that stuff, especially with the fans. I mean, you know, I can, it only, I can only talk to my sister so much about it. I need the fans <laughs> to come and show up and talk to me. Exactly. <laughs> and you just got done doing uh, the Stan Lee comic con out in LA, I believe was the, that for last weekend of October, I believe. Yeah, it was. Um, yeah, it was great because we we had a really wonderful, pardon the pun, uh, <laughs> Wonder Woman panel. And um, it was, you know, just glorious to, to assemble this panel and meet the fans and be on the stage with other people who celebrate her and are and are just so enamored of her and and have just supported her, whether it's voiceover actors or people who draw her or write about her. We just, you know, we just had a dynamite panel. And I know uh, I've had an interview and a conversation with Meredith Finch, who wrote mm-hmm. Wonder Woman, and her husband, David Finch, did the art at the time. And right. she, you know, it's always a thrill for anybody, I think, whether they are writing for the character, drawing the character, or in your case, performing as the character. She's one of the big three. Uh, Superman, Batman, and Wonder Woman are known as the DC Trinity. And as mm-hmm. you mentioned earlier, she is getting her due this year. And, you know, I, don't, I just I think that when people talk about the honor of it, the privilege of it, which I often do, it's not overstating it because you recognize the history, um, you recognize the popularity, and you feel like you've been given something that you know, you know that you must appreciate it and you must feel um, humbled by because it is just so extraordinary to be given this job that I was given this job in 2000. And 
one of the great benefits of voicing her was that this year I got to meet Christy Marston, who, whose grandfather, William Moulton Marston, created one. Yes. Wow. And she, I know, and she was one of the women on my panel. Um, I invited Christy to come to Los Angeles to be on the Wonder Woman 75 panel, and she did. And so we got to meet each other and spend time together, and I heard wonderful stories about her grandfather and more, more importantly, her grandmother, um, you know, who really, really inspired the Wonder Woman character. And it was just, it was just amazing to spend the time with this woman who grew up. And, and right now she's actually in, at, in Rhode Island. She's doing the Rhode Island Comic Con this weekend. And her booth is just from, you know, from side to side. It's just covered in Wonder Woman. Um, and it's, it's fantastic. So, yeah, that was, that, was a, that was really terrific. And also meeting Shannon Farnan who I met in, um, in Denver uh, last year. We did a panel together, and Shannon voiced Wonder Woman and Super Friends. Yes. And so, you know, just that, that's the kind of stuff that makes me giddy because we all share a piece of this history, and this year allows us to celebrate it together. Um, you know, and it's, it's, you know, I'm pinching myself. I can imagine. And I, that's one of the shows that I grew up watching uh, was I remember specifically in the in the early 80s, it was called Super Friends Galactic Guardians. And it had Firestorm <laughs> and Cyborg and uh, and everyone like that. And Darkseid was the big bad for that particular series. And it was based on right. the, the Kenner Superpowers toy line. And, uh, and yeah, Wonder Woman, obviously, again, she was front and center there with the Justice League. And it's uh, it, it's about time that she's getting her due with all the 75 years. And what a fantastic... I can only imagine the stories that uh, his granddaughter must have shared with you about creating Wonder Woman and, and, and writing her and all that from all that time period. Yeah, I mean, she, you know, she didn't really grow up with her grandfather because he, he passed early on, but she grew up with her. Her grandmother lived to be 100. Wow. And she, she knew her grandmother very, very well, spent so much time with her. And her father created, Christie's father created the Wonder Woman Museum, um, and so Christy maintains that. And again, she's in Connecticut. The museum, I believe, is in New York. But you should have her on your show because there's such there's such um, incredible history there. And, and she lived it. So and a lot of people don't know her or don't, and don't know the name. And so when when all these things were going on, these panels and all these celebratory things were going on, you know, my first thought was, well, let me ask her if she'll come, because how can you throw a party for Wonder Woman and not invite the family. Exactly. That's very true. And, and when she said yes, I mean, first I fell off my chair. <laughs> and then I, uh, you know, and then I started just, I mean, really, I can't, I can't tell you what an honor it was to meet her. And, and we had such fun the entire weekend. I can only imagine. Yeah, that just, uh, just the fact that we are celebrating, you know, because back even again, when I was a kid, if someone say, if you, you told someone, oh, I collect comic books, you're kind of looked on like meh. Now it's almost, oh, you don't collect comic books? You don't? Because it's so mainstream now. Uh, and I would just like to point out, I was doing it before it was cool, people. I just want to point that out. <laughs> but uh, but to, that was to, so true. It's so true. It's so, it was so peripheral. It was it was so on the you know on on the outskirts. And now it, it, you're right, absolutely. And these features, I mean, every every other week there's a new feature film. Um, and, and it's exciting. I mean, again, I didn't, I'm not like you. I didn't grow up reading the comic books. I mean, once in a while, like an Archie or something like that, but I didn't really grow up as a fan. So I have had quite the education in the last 15, 16 years because, you know, I've had to, it's, you know, on the job training. Right. And that's actually was going to be one of the questions I usually ask. Uh, celebrities who are portraying certain roles is were you a fan of the genre beforehand? So how quick, I mean, you obviously you must've been familiar with Wonder Woman. Everyone is, but how much uh, research and what kind of research did you do to prepare for the role? Well, I did, I was very familiar with her because of Linda Carter, sure. um, because I'm of the age that I grew up with, with Linda Carter's version of Wonder Woman. And that was my sense of her. Mm -hmm. um, but, but the truth is that when I went into, to read, to audition for Bruce Tim and Andrea Romano, they had a very clear um, idea of what they wanted her to sound like and what they wanted her to be like. And so I think as actors, you know, we're really responding to somebody else's vision and we're helping them, you know, see that vision through. 
And so there was Bruce Kim in every session, and there was Andrea Romano directing me in every session of the Justice League um, and, and giving me the guidelines and, and, and directing me as to how they wanted this particular Diana to sound like and to be like. So as much as, you know, you, as an actress, yes, you can do all the research in the world. And I certainly did do some research and read certain things and wanted to know more about the character and her origins. I mean, I had to say, say names like Apollota and then Mascara. <laughs> you don't want to sound like a, you know, you want to know what you're talking about. Sure, exactly. Um, so, right. So, you know, I did some research. And, but ultimately, I relied on Bruce and Andrea to, to really um, guide me through it. And then... As it became clearer to me who, the, who she was, and I became more connected to the character and more confident in voicing her, because it was quite intimidating in the beginning, mm-hmm. um, then, then I found my own voice. I found my voice you know, through her, and that, that really was a turning point for me. I can imagine. That's got to be just such an incredible experience. We're going to come right back. We have another break to take. We're going to be back talking with Susan Eisenberg, voice over actress extraordinaire, right after this, so stand by. Holy cool lefty! Hi, this is Burt Ward, Robin the Boy Wonder from the TV series Batman. You're listening to Geek to Me. Golly gee willikers, it's fantastic! And we are back on the air with Susan Eisenberg. If you have a question for her, I know Twitter user at Patrick Zercher. I was having trouble with the website, uh, trying to link through my website, geekmeradio.com, to the radio station page. If you want to uh, stream us online, just go right to the website for the radio station itself. My website may be experiencing a little bit of uh, hiccup. So it's 1260amtheanswer.com. Hit that listen live button in the upper right-hand corner. And you'll be able to hear the conversation perfectly fine. Uh, we were talking, Susan, before the break about, uh, obviously, your uh, work as Wonder Woman, but all the video games you've done, too. Uh, do you have a fa- It's probably like asking you to pick your favorite child, but do you have a favorite video game role you voiced? Well, I mean, I have to say the favorite is Wonder Woman because I've done it in different games. Sure. So I've done Injustice, and I've done DCU online game, and... Um, they're both, you know, again, <laughs> the thing is, as an actor, you're just thrilled that the phone has rung and somebody's <laughs> asking you to voice her again. You know, people will ask me, well, why aren't you voicing Wonder Woman in this project or that project? And it's like, well, you have to be asked. That's like the protocol. I mean, I can't just like walk, you know, walk into Warner Brothers or DC and say, listen, I'm playing Wonder Woman. Sure, um, you, sure so you could. You, well, I could, <laughs> but, I, you know, I'd probably be thrown out on my tush. Well, but, yeah. Um, yeah, but you know, so it's it's so the fact that I got to do that was you know just voice her and anything is fantastic in the games. But I guess the the, the one that comes to mind um, is probably Shock T in the Force in Star yes. Wars: The Force Unleashed because it's such a different character than Wonder Woman and it's a different age, different sound. It's one of those where people are surprised when they find out it's me in the game. Mm-hmm. Um, I have a picture of her, and when I go to Comic-Cons, I put it on my table, and when people see the, the photo of Shock T, they're like, oh, I had no idea you, you had done that. So because she's so different than most of the things in my repertoire, um, I'd, I'd have to choose her. That makes sense, yeah. Second, so, of course, uh, to, second to Wonder Woman, of course. Sure, and you got to play a uh, superhero and a Jedi uh, in your repertoire, which is pretty cool. <laughs> I know, it's so, it's so true because I actually got to say... I actually got to say, may the force be with you. And I <laughs> I just remember thinking, like, I am so lucky. I cannot believe I get to say words like that. Um, and I still can't believe I got to say it. So between great hair and um, may the force be with you, I think I'd say I'm, I've been very, 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 very blessed. So it's interesting, too. I love talking to voiceover uh, performers because there's obviously so many nuances to, as you said, a different age of this character. So it's not like someone will flip on the TV and hear you voicing Wonder Woman and immediately say, Oh yeah, yeah. I recognize her as the voice from this too, because there are so many nuances and you have to have such control over your voice. Is this a, a field that you always wanted to go into or was it just something that 
happen to come by and you're like, yeah, I can do this? You know, it was, I wanted to, to act. And so in that regard, it's been something I wanted to do for a long time. But I, I didn't know that I would not be in front of the camera. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't until I was in front of the camera that I realized I didn't enjoy it and that it, it just wasn't my thing. And because I had had some experience being in front of a microphone, I knew I liked it. I knew that my voice could be used as a tool, as an instrument, mm-hmm. um, whether it was in advertising or, you know, embodying a character. And, and when I decided, okay, this is really what I'm going to pursue, that's when I, I t- started to take classes specifically for voiceover work. Okay. And I As know to just acting classes, right? And um, it's obviously very different. Uh, actually, doing acting versus voice acting is, I mean, just huge, vast difference. It's really interesting because a lot of people who do acting for the camera, you know, will come in and do voiceover, and they'll talk about how different it is and how challenging it can be um, because you don't have, you know, you can't rely on your facial expressions, you can't rely on your body. Um, you really have to bring that all through your voice. And there's definitely technique to that. And so, and there are people, I mean, I, I, I'm sure you know of them. There are voiceover actors um, like Gray Delisle, like Jennifer Hale, that you, if you hire them, you get about, you know, 200 different voices. Right. I mean, there are just so many different characters they can play. I, I've never been one of those people. I, I kind of stay in a certain region. And I can vary it and I can do different things. But, but typically, if somebody hires me, it's because they want a variation on the voice that you're hearing. So maybe a little bit deeper in my register or a little bit higher in my register. But typically, it, it's around this area. And another person who has done a lot of, obviously, in front of camera work and then voiceover work, Mark Hamill, who voiced the Joker um, so you've got that in common. You've been a uh, DC Comics icon and a Jedi. Both you and Mark Hamill have done the same thing. <laughs> you know, no one's ever pointed that out to me before. And I, I, I just hope somebody's pointing it out to Mark as well. <laughs> <laughs> so I know he voiced the Joker in that uh, first appearance of the Injustice gang in the DC uh, Justice League TV series. Uh, did you right. actually get to work with him? Or is it one of those things where he was in another studio and sent his recordings in? You know, I did get to work with him. He was he he was in several sessions, I believe I did, but I didn't get to know him. Um, you know, it's not like Batman and and Flash and Superman, where we all got to know each other very very well. Mm-hmm. Even Lex Luthor, who was on the show quite a bit, yes. I didn't get to to know Mark, and I it's I lament that because I wish I had. Um, but you know, I I I really didn't. We weren't in a lot of sessions together. Um, like I say, the seven of us were always, were practically always together. And then all the guest stars that were there were with us as well. Right. Yeah. It's just, again, just the amount of talent that came through just the Justice League series is just outstanding and mind boggling. When you look at the names like Carl Lumley, Kevin Conroy, you've got Powers Booth, uh, just so many fantastic people who did voice work on that show again if i were you i'd be pinching myself too (laughs) well and i don't think anyone really said said no to andrea um and to bruce i think that first of all like i said earlier actors want the phone to ring they want to be asked to work so that's first and foremost but then i i can remember working with alfred molina when he came in to record some some um some work with us and he had never done voiceover at that point Hmm. but he was curious and it's like a different forum for him to work and so he was like okay of course i'll do this now how do i do it and (laughs) you know um you know because there's definitely a learning curve to it to to being there's a learning curve to all of it so if you're doing a commercial it's different than going in to do an animated series which is different from going in and doing a video game which is different from going in to do a promo um it's all you know it's all recording it's all voice work but different different protocol for each I'm sure. Yeah, that makes sense. And we are going to uh, take another quick break. You can check out Susan Eisenberg, by the way. SusanEisenbergVoice.com is her really cool website. My website is jealous of yours, actually, so I need to uh, obviously (laughs) do some work on mine. But we are going to come back. Go ahead. Thank you. Oh, no problem. No problem. We're going to thank you for the compliment. Not at all. Not at all. We are going to take another break. 
We'll come back. And again, if you want to, I see we've got someone on hold. So stand by, caller line one. We'll let you talk to Susan Eisenberg right after this. Hi, this is Tova Felchew from The Walking Dead. I play Deanna Monroe, and I'm happy to be on Geek to Me Radio. And we are very happy to have the city of St. Charles as one of the official sponsors of Geek to Me Radio. Uh, what an amazing place we've got here in the heart of St. Louis. It's just across the uh, 70 Bridge into historic St. Charles, and it's really just like taking a step back in time. They've got the, the historic buildings, the cobblestone streets, all of which have been preserved by the Historical Society. They've got events going on all year round. You probably were down there for the Legends and Lanterns thing. They had this Halloween, which was fantastically fun. And of course, as you know, largest Christmas festival in the country, Christmas Traditions, will be held again. I believe this is the 27th year of Christmas traditions right there along historic Main Street. They've got events all year long, obviously. This coming Friday, November the 18th, they have the Treasures Chest Holiday Craft Expo. You can check that out at the St. Charles Convention Center. Plan your trip. Lots of unique shopping and dining experiences all over the place down there. Go to their website, historicstcharles.com. Click on the Things to Do tab for all the events and activities going on. And please come out and see them at Christmas Traditions all over the world. People come from all over to visit St. Charles during Christmas, and it's fantastically fun for the whole family. Check them out again online, historicstcharles.com. And speaking of icons, we are still on the phone with Susan Eisenberg, the definitive, in my opinion, voice of Wonder Woman. And we've got another caller. Someone called in just before the break. We want to get to them right now. Uh, okay. this, this is Bob. Bob, how are you? Yes, hi. Thank you for taking my call. Of course. Uh, say hello to Susan Eisenberg. Hello, Susan Eisenberg. Hi, hello, Bob. How Jason are you? Show. I've Thank loved the you. first game. I'm really looking forward to seeing uh, the work uh, in the second game, uh, the voice acting uh, along with the graphics. I mean, it really uh, tells the story. Without the voice actors, you know, it's... It's not an experience like that is. Um, and I'd just be curious if you had anything to say regarding um, the current troubles uh, facing uh, voice actors in the uh, video game industry. Great question. You know, um, for the listeners out there who don't know, we're, on, we're striking right now. We're on strike. The video game industry has, hasn't been working with a contract for about 19 months because we can't seem to um, get the the gaming companies to give us some very, very basic things that we're asking for. And it's, it's, it's beyond troubling. I, I, I have felt that it was unfair for the over a decade, but for whatever reason people had um, not to strike a decade ago, people are very emboldened right now and feel that it is time to, to demand what we're, we're asking for because it's, only fair and you know we tried to negotiate for like i say about 19 months and we just could not seem to see eye to eye with the um with the gaming industry so and it's not the developers it's not the writers it's it's really the companies um you know the money people and it's it's very very disappointing to all the actors because we just want to get back to work i mean we just want to get into the studio and start voicing our characters and we won't do that until um, certain concerns are are dealt with. And as you an know, addendum, I'm oh, sorry, go ahead. You know, there are about three or four issues on the table, and you know, they they're from everywhere from like the the safety of actors who do the mocap, the motion capture. They're about um, our our voices and not abusing our voices for four hour sessions, where we're asked to do grueling. Um, work for four hours straight, and a lot of times that can really lead to damage to the vocal cords. So we're asking for, for you know, some concessions on that, and not having the four-hour sessions, but maybe having two-hour sessions for only those sessions that are vocally demanding. We're asking for a bit of a piece of the pie, um, and it's a very small piece for a very large pie, and it would only take place as if the game earned a certain amount of money, then the actors 
would receive a small portion of what they got to go into the studio to begin with. So basically a session fee when the game reaches a certain profit point. And, you know, unfortunately, um, we weren't able to reach an agreement on any of these arguments. And it's, um, and so we decided as a whole and very unified, I must say, um, the union decided that it was time to strike. So we've been on strike for several weeks now. And thank you, Bob, for that call. Uh, Joey's going to get your information. And as an addendum to that question, Susan, I know for a while the hashtag was trending on Twitter. Uh, is there a website or something that the fans can go to that you know of to help uh, to kind of help you guys out? Yeah, absolutely there is. And I can I will look it up right now. But just so you know, the hashtag is Performance Matters. Performance and Matters, okay. Trying, right, Performance Matters. Because, you know, we want to believe that um, that our contr- contribution to the gaming industry matters and we just want it to be respected. And we think it does. And we think we bring something unique to the game. We think the fans believe that as well. And so, um, yeah, it's, it's just, it's a hugely important time. And like I said, I've been, we've, we've picketed twice so far and the solidarity is so awesome and so awe inspiring to me because you know, it really does get to the point where right is right. And what we're asking for, I believe, and I think most of our, our union believes, what we're asking for is completely just and reasonable. Sure, exactly. Because people want to be, like you said, I, that's something I don't even think of is the motion capture stuff. Safety for that. I mean, of course, that is, people probably don't think about that when they're playing a video game. But yeah, there was an actor or actress in a harness doing the motion capture stuff that allowed this game. And truly, uh, gaming wouldn't be what it is today without the voice actors and actresses who perform those types of moves and who do the voices. So uh, it, make sure you go on uh, Twitter. The, ha- the hashtag isn't currently trending, I don't think, but hashtag performance matters. Support your artists in these industries. Make sure that your voices are heard. Uh, it's more important now than ever. We are going to take our last break of the hour. We are going to come back and wrap things up with Susan Eisenberg. Stand by. Hi, this is Greg Weissman, the creator of Gargoyles and co-creator of Young Justice, and you're listening to geek to me Radio. Stay well. I will say it is very hard to stay whelmed when you're talking to Susan Eisenberg on the air, as we have been for the past hour. Uh, I know the announcement just came down recently that Young Justice will finally be getting a third <laughs> season. The, the fans wow. have been crying about this forever, and I saw you congratulated uh, Greg Wiseman uh, on Twitter. Uh, any chance that we'll be able to hear you in Young Justice? You know, um, I, I can't, I don't know, because it's just so new, and I think they're just trying to get their bearings. But um, I, I'm just so overjoyed that the show is returning. I, you know, I wasn't in the show, um, but I'm, I'm good friends with Brandon and with, with Greg. And in fact, I heard um, Greg's promo on the air when we were in break and I heard Greg giving a, a shout out to your station. Yeah. And it just, it's so, it, it's so thrilling that the fans were able to make this happen. You know, I mean, day after day, if you, if you follow Greg on Twitter, every day he's asked about the return of Young Justice for a third season. And I have never seen a movement like this happen where it's just so exciting where people are saying well obviously it's happened before where people ask for a show to come back and it does but i've never been this up close to it so um i'm just overjoyed so i don't know if i'll be on the show i mean here's hoping but um aside from that and my participation i'm just thrilled that the show's coming back as am i and i would love to see honestly i don't i don't see why they can't bring back justice league for another season direct netflix that'd be great any talk of that you know, there is no talk of that. And I, you know, we had five seasons, so I don't, I can't imagine, it's, it's hard for me to imagine that happening. What I would love to see happen, I mean, if you and I are just, you know, talking, I would love to see an animated feature. I mean, I just think, given that there's going to be a live action Justice League movie, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I, I can't think of anything better than having an animated Justice League movie with, with our original cast. I mean, I think that would be such a hoot. For the fans, for us, the actors who haven't really been 
um, given a, a proper reunion since we went off the air in 2006. And when we had Greg Weisman on the show, that was something I mentioned to him was that uh, the DC direct-to-DVD and Blu-ray animated movies are just phenomenal. They beat a lot yeah, of the stuff that's yeah. actually in the theater live action stuff now. It's just incredible the uh, the 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 amount of talent they have, the how well it's written, how well the animation comes off. The, it's it's really just so good. It's it's amazing. And you know, um, the thing about Justice League that's always so odd to me is that there's such a tremendous fan base out there. I, I meet them all the time. I meet the fans all the time and I hear from them all the time. And um, I wish we could find a story and a willingness to tell that story with that cast, because I think that would just be the best. I, really I agree. Do. I agree. I know the fans do too. Uh, we're actually coming up to the end of the show. Susan, we're going to have to have you back on if you're up for it. Cause I've got so much more. I'd love to speak with you about Absolutely. I mean, I, I would love it. Fantastic. Thank you so much. And thank you for listening to geek to me Radio. We'll be back next week. Thank you, St. Louis. Good night.